The RTX 3090 is one seriously power-hungry GPU, so let's go ahead and address that without virtually sacrificing any performance. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys, Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we'll be taking a look at undervolting this ASUS Strix RTX 3090. Just recently, I did a review of this graphics card, and one of the main things that we learned was just how power-hungry the RTX 3090 GPU is. If you want to see my whole in-depth review of the card, I recommend checking the review out. Not too long ago, we undervolted both the RTX 3080 and RTX 3060 Ti GPUs, and the results that were attained told me that this was the way to go for RTX 30 series graphics cards. We were able to significantly reduce power consumption during a heavy GPU synthetic load, lower temps, lower noise, all without barely sacrificing any performance. Also, the power usage during actual games was even lower considering that a heavy graphics test will put 100% of the load on the GPU, whereas in games it's not always like that and there is some fluctuations in GPU usage, which means lower power consumption. Nonetheless, when the RTX 3060 Ti was tested at stock, it would be consuming power anywhere from the high 100s to the mid 200s in, in terms of wattage. And when we undervolted it, it definitely tamed the GPU more and brought power consumption in line where you'd expect a mid-range GPU to be. And so when I tested the RTX 3090, I said to myself that I'm definitely going to have to undervolt this GPU as well. Since during our time spy extreme stress test, the GPU was consuming about 381 watts on average and was regularly hitting its power limit at 390 watts, which is definitely pretty high and that's without any overclocking. Alright, so undervolting a graphics card is pretty simple. Download and install the latest version of MSI Afterburner. Once you've done that, press Ctrl F on your keyboard and this will open up the Voltage Frequency Curve Editor. Here you can adjust the curve and fine tune the frequencies relative to how much voltage the card needs. The Voltage Curve Editor can be used for either overclocking or undervolting. In this case, go ahead and type in 200 MHz in the core clock field. This will then decrease the overall curve where every single point will then have deducted 200 MHz from it. Then what you want to do is choose the voltage point you want to target and where the max boost will occur. So for the RTX 3090, we'll go ahead and choose 825 millivolts, and I want to target around 1800 MHz. So just go ahead and raise that point up to 1800 MHz and hit apply. This will then adjust the whole curve and all the points from there to 1800 megahertz. So what this will do is make it so that when the card boosts, it will be only using that much voltage. Now with the way GPU boost will work, it will still go over 1800 megahertz if the card feels like there's other headroom such as thermals or silicon quality. Though you should now see lower voltage under low targeting 825 millivolts, whereas before the card would be freely using up to whatever the hard limit of the BIOS would be configured at. So that's essentially all you have to do in order to undervolt the GPU. Now just like with overclocking, you also have to validate the stability of your undervolt by running a few stress tests to ensure that the GPU can work correctly under load and that you don't encounter any crashes while gaming. Also do keep in mind, just like with overclocking, undervolting results can vary depending on the quality of your chip, so your mileage may vary. Before we get into the results, I just want to do a quick rundown of the test system specs. For the CPU, we've got an AMD Ryzen 7 3800 XT, cooled by a Corsair H115i Pro XT 280mm all-in-one liquid cooler. For the RAM, we've got 16GB of G-Skill Trident Z memory, running at 3600MHz with CL15 timings. The motherboard is an MSI MEG X570 Unify. For our storage device, we've got a 2TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe SSD. Powering the entire system is an EVGA G3 1000W 80 plus gold power supply. If you're interested in full system specs, check the video description down below. After I had validated the undervolt settings were stable, then I decided to do some benchmark tests to see how much performance had been impacted. Power consumption and temps will be shown after. We'll first take a look at Times by Extreme, which is a fairly heavy GPU synthetic benchmark at 4K and uses DirectX 12. At stock, the RTX 3090 scored 10,346 points, and when undervolted, dropped just 46 points, which is hardly anything at all. For our first game, we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and at stock, the 3090 was barely ahead of the 3080 in this benchmark. Now, when undervolted, it sits right in between the stock performance results of the 3080 and the 3090, a drop of just 3% for the average frame rate, not noticeable at all. 
Moving on, and our next game is Control, and here we're seeing pretty much the exact same performance. Sure, the FPS figures are very slightly ahead, but those results are within margin of error, so you can practically call this a tie. Still, I have seen people report in my previous Undervolt videos that undervolting their GPU had resulted in better performance since the GPU ran cooler and thus allowed for a higher boost overall, so your mileage may vary on that. Next, we have Horizon Zero Dawn, and this was a game that showed us a pretty good GPU scaling where... At stock, the 3090 was 21% ahead of the 3080. When undervolted, we're seeing a drop of 4% for the average frame rate and 1% lows. Again, these differences wouldn't be noticeable to the user, but what will be noticeable is the lower power bill, better acoustics, and lower temps, but more on that later. With Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the RTX 3090 is now turned into an RTX 3080, but to be fair, it was already very close when comparing stock configurations. Again, nothing noticeable, so no real loss there. For our last game, we've got Red Dead Redemption 2, and just like with AC Valhalla, we're seeing effectively RTX 3080-like performance, but this time the drop is a bit more considerable, 9% for the average frame rate, and 14% for the 1% minimums. With that said though, the undervolted performance is still totally acceptable for a game like this. Now for our 5 game average, we're looking at a loss of around 4% when it comes to the average frame rate, and 5% for the 1% lows. Not too bad, and like I said, majority of the time, these performance differences will be completely neglected legible and the loss will be totally outweighed when we take a look at thermals and power consumption. So let's go ahead and do just that. During these tests, Time Spy Extreme's second benchmark was run on loop for about an hour. First we'll take a look at thermals, and at stock the RTX 3090 attained an average core temp of around 65 degrees celsius and peaked at 67 degrees celsius, which isn't terrible, but I did note in the review that at stock the fan curve used by ASUS was somewhat aggressive. When undervolted, we're seeing a drop of around 4 degrees for the average core temp, and and the highest peak temperature recorded was 63, a decent reduction. What was also noticeable was the fact that the fans were spinning at around the mid-1500 RPM range, and there was less fluctuation overall resulting in lower noise, another pro on the list for why you should be undervolting. As for power consumption, the RTX 3090 consumed around 338 watts, which is an 11% decrease and peaked at 364 watts. Essentially, this GPU is now comparable to the RTX 3080 in this scenario. Now, Time Spy Extreme is a pretty heavy GPU synthetic benchmark, and generally in actual real-world scenarios such as gaming, you're going to see lower temps and also lower power consumption. So, what will happen next is that I'll leave you guys with two gaming benchmarks showing side-by-side -side comparison of the GPU running stock and when undervolted. And here you'll notice that as the benchmark goes on, the GPU power consumption along with temps will be significantly lower. The first benchmark is Red Dead Redemption 2, and you'll notice that at stock, the GPU will be consuming around 380 to 390 watts of power, while running at around 66 degrees Celsius, whereas when undervolted, the car's power draw is in the low 300s, and the temps are around 60 degrees, so that's a fantastic result. Oh, and performance-wise, there was hardly a difference. The next game was Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and the results seen here were also similar to what we saw in Red Dead. So that will do it for this video. If you're an owner of an RTX 3090 or really any RTX 30 series GPU, then I highly recommend undervolting. You're going to see a significant reduction in temps, noise, and power while barely sacrificing performance. So, or if anything, you might even actually see better performance, but again, your mileage may vary on that.
I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.